Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm joined by Everett. Yeah. What are we gonna be working on today? What's our fancy new material? This is some Zercati. So Describe it's got it. three different alloys of titanium in it. Uh -huh. And then it's also all twisted together with some zirconium. So you get some crazy colors. In it. But we've got four alloys overall, three types of titanium and then the black zirconium. It looks absolutely wild. What kind of design are we gonna start with today? So today I'm thinking just like a basic ring. We're gonna put some bevels on it, put a comfort finish on it. And then in the future, we definitely have some room for growth. Yeah, and we'll see how this ring turns out. If you guys really like it, let us know if you wanna see um, some more crazy designs with it in the future. So I think that's a good introduction. Let's go ahead and get started with the making. Yeah. Cutting this metal goes bunch slower just because of the hardness of this material so you gotta really take your time. Yeah, now we're heating up the cookie just to give you a little sneak peek of what it will look like with the final product. When you're coloring it, you gotta be careful not to go too far or else you're gonna get outside of the nice color range that's as vibrant as possible. Use a center drill and the tailstock on the lathe to drill out a hole in the center. Because this is made out of so many different alloys, it behaves differently than what you'd expect and it's just kind of a little bit tricky to work with. Get a bunch of different chatter marks just from the tool jumping back and forth. Yeah, you get a lot of material hardening going on, so you gotta be really careful, make sure that you're using sharp cutting bits and that you're just taking your time and doing it proper. You gotta make sure to constantly clear your chips when cutting zirconium because it does start little metal fires and you can't put that out with water. Yeah, it gets a little bit dangerous. When we're filming the videos, we let the chips accumulate on purpose. That way we can demonstrate the interesting nature of the material where it just catches fire like that. And when you do get a fire, it's good to just get the chips out of way. Just put underneath your lathe, out of sight, out of mind. You don't have to worry about it. Now we're turning down the outside diameter of the ring. It's a very slow process, but it's all worth it. Then we'll true up those edges real quick. Oh yeah. We 
because there's so many alloys on this material, there's a bunch of chatter marks and we gotta sand that all the way. This step takes a few minutes and it uses up a bunch of abrasive, but it's definitely worth doing. Gotta get out all those scratches with the sandpaper and this is just a preliminary step to get that polish really working and getting it shiny. Right now we're cutting the bevels on the sides. This step can be really challenging, especially with this material because it likes to produce so much chatter. So you'll notice as Everett's getting close to finishing off the bevel, he'll stop the lathe and he'll feed it by hand. That can really help eliminate a lot of that chatter. taping up the ring right now just so it doesn't leave marks on the ring while we're finishing up the inside. Doing the comfort finish on these is a lot of fun obviously because you can see how many sparks it produces. This process probably took me about five minutes just to get all the scratches out and get it really nice looking. Yeah, these rings really do highlight any scratch marks, so it's really important to make sure to get rid of all of them. After anodizing any mistake, we'll show tenfold. Right now I'm using medium AstroTech for the final polish on the inside and I use the buffing wheel for the outside. The ring really heats up on the buffing wheel when it's running at 3000 RPM so I had to constantly dip it in water to not burn off my fingers. For Zercutty, we really like to use heat anodizing with this propane torch. If you electro anodize it using high voltage, all of the colors will be extremely muted. I'm making sure just to not over anodize it because those colors get to a certain point and then after that point it just gets really dim. The colors aren't as vibrant as what you see here. So here it is finished. Oh yeah. I don't think there's any other material quite as colorful as this. I really love the results that we're left with. You can see that high polish underneath really shines through and gives it a premium look. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. It was a real pleasure to make. Thank you so much, Everett, for helping with this project, and we'll catch you in the next one.